The answer to a question. I do not have the time to weigh up the ideas of Mustafa Sabri and those of Musa Vekuf. I shall only say this much that the one went to one extreme and the other to the other extreme. Mustafa Sabri was right relatively to Musa Vekuf, but it is not right to denigrate someone like Muhyiddin who was a miracle of the Islamic sciences. Yes, Muhyiddin was himself rightly guided and acceptable, but should not be the guide and instructor with all his works. Since he very often proceeded in the realities without balance, he opposed the rules of the Sunnis and some of the things he said apparently denote misguidance. However, he himself was free of misguidance. A word may sometimes appear to be unbelief, but the one who speaks it is not an unbeliever. Mustafa Sabri did not take these points into consideration. He was extreme concerning certain points of Sunni law and duty bigotry. As for Musa Bekuf, he was excessively in favor of renewal because of this and the concessions he made to modernity in respect of his ideas, he was very much in error. He corrupted some of the truths of Islam with his false interpretations. He went far to excess by maintaining that someone rejected like Abu Ala al-Ma'ari was superior to authoritative scholars and favoring disproportionately matters stated by Muhyiddin which opposed the Sunnis because they suited his own ideas. Muhyiddin said, other people who are not one of us and do not know our station should not read our books for it may be damaging for them. Yes, it is harmful to read Muhyiddin's books at the present time, especially the matters related to the unity of existence. Said Nursi In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, I shall explain a matter that unfolded before the gaze of my imagination one glittering night of the festival, while watching from my prison window through the lens of prudence and foresight the laughter of mankind that would turn into tears. As the lives of people of previous ages who lie in the graveyard may be seen in the cinema, so I as though saw the moving corpses of people who would inhabit it in the near future. I wept for those merrymakers. All of a sudden a feeling of desolation and pity came over me. I turned to my intellect and asked of reality, what is this imagining? Reality replied, saying, In fifty years' time, out of the fifty who are now laughing and enjoying themselves with such joy, five will be bent and stooping seventy year olds, while forty-five will have rotted in the graveyard. Those beautiful features and joyful smiles will have been transformed into their opposites. According to the rule of all that is coming is close, since it is to some degree true that things that are going to happen in the near future are seen to have already arrived, then surely what you see is not imagination. Furthermore, since the heedless laughter of this world veils bitter facts that does turn it into tears and is temporary and subject to decline, most certainly it is only thankful, innocent enjoyment within the bonds of the licit which leads to awareness of God's presence and dispels heedlessness and pleasures that will be permanent by reason of their reward, that will cause joy to wretched man's eternally worshipping heart and his spirit, which has an irresistible desire for immortality and make them smile. It is because of this that are among the narrations many that strongly encourage thanks and remembrance of God at festival times in order to prevent heedlessness from prevailing and deviation into the illicit. To do this, at such times may transform the bounties of joy and happiness into thanks and make the bounty continue and increase it. For thanks increases bounty and dispels heedlessness. Said Nursi In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. This concerns one point contained in the verse. The human soul is certainly prone to evil. And in the hadith, the meaning of which is, your worst enemy is your soul. Note, this peace is beneficial for everyone. The person who loves himself 
If his evil commanding soul has not been purified, will love no one else. Even if he does apparently, he does not do so sincerely, but only for the pleasure of it or for some good he receives. He always tries to make himself liked. Also, he never ascribes faults to himself. He defends and exonerates himself like a lawyer. He praises himself, exaggerating and even lying, showing himself to be free of fault, as though sanctifying himself, and according to his degree receives a slap from the verse, who takes as his God his desires. His self-praise and efforts to make himself liked have the reverse effect, for he attracts contempt and is treated coldly. He also loses sincerity in his actions that look to the hereafter and they become mixed with hypocrisy. He is defeated by the emotions and desires of the soul which are blind to the consequences, do not think of results, and are obsessed with present pleasure. He serves a year's prison sentence due to one hour's pleasure demanded by his emotions which have gone astray. He pays ten years penalty on account of one minute's pride or revenge. Quite simply, like a silly child who sells the portion of the Quran, he is learning to buy a single sweet in order to flatter his emotions, gratify his senses, and satisfy his appetites. He makes his diamond-like good deeds the means to egotistical pleasures, as insignificant as fragments of glass, and he loses out in profitable works. O oh God, preserve us from the evil of the soul and of a Satan, and from the evil of jinn and man. A question. How can incarceration in hell for an infinite duration in return for unbelief for a short duration be justice? The answer. Reckoning a year to be 365 days, the law of justice requires for a one minute murder 7,884,000 minutes imprisonment. So, since one minute's unbelief is like a thousand murders, according to the law of human justice, someone who lives a life of 20 years in unbelief and dies in that state deserves imprisonment for 57 billion, 200 and 1,200 million years. It may be understood from this how conformable with divine justice is the verse. They will dwell therein forever. The reason for the connection between these two numbers, so far from one another, is this. Since murder and unbelief are destruction and aggression, they have an effect on others. A murder which takes one minute negates, on average, at least 15 years of the victim's life, so the murderer is imprisoned in their place. While, since one minute of unbelief denies a thousand and one divine names, and denigrates their inscriptions, violates the rights of the universe and denies its perfections, and gives the lie to innumerable evidences of divine unity, and rejects their testimony, the unbeliever is cast down to the laws of the law for more than a thousand years, and dwells in imprisonment. Said Nursi A meaningful and subtle coincidence the coincidence of article 163, under which the Risalinur students were charged and sentenced, and the number of deputies 163 out of 200, who allotted 150,000 liras for the madrasa of the Risalinur's author, in effect says this. The appreciative signatures of 163 deputies of the government of the Republic quashes the ruling of article 163 of the criminal courts concerning him. Another subtle and meaningful coincidence is this. The 128 parts of the Risale Nur are put together in 115 booklets. The number of days from when the Risale Nur students and its author were first arrested on 27th April 1935 to the date on which the court passed judgment on 19th August 1935 was 115 coinciding with the number of books of the Risale Nur. In addition, the 115 people found guilty coincides with the number exactly 
showing that the calamity visited on the Risale Nur students and its author is being regulated by a hand of favor. Note, it is worth noting that the arrest of some of the Risale Nur students started on 25 April 1935. Thus, because in the indictment 117 people were cited as guilty, the names of two of them had been repeated, the number shown for the students was 117, this coincided with the 117 days from the date that groups were arrested to the date of the court's judgment, adding a further subtlety to the former coincidence. The 28th point of the 28th flash. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. So, they should not strain their ears in the direction of the exalted assembly, but be cast away from every sight. Reposed, for they are under a perpetual penalty. Except such as snatch away something by stealth, and they are pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness. And we have adorned the lost heaven with lamps, and we have made them missiles to drive away the evil ones. An important point concerning verses like this will be explained in connection with criticisms made by the people of misguidance. It is as follows. Suppose from among the jinn and a satan's eavesdrop on events in the heavens, and like swift sayers, mediums, and some spiritualists, convey news from the world of the unseen, so that their giving information about the unseen should not give rise to any doubts when the Quran was first revealed. Their continual espionage was prevented to a greater extent, and they were repulsed by shooting stars. The following is a brief reply to an extremely important question in three parts concerning the above verses which are about this subject. Question: It is understood from verses like this that spying a Satan's infiltrate the distant lands of the heavens in order to learn of some minor and even personal events in the unseen. Rumors of such minor events as those spread everywhere in those vast lands, and any Satan anywhere may hear a confused version of them and pass it on. However, reason and science cannot accept such a thing. Also, it is said that some of the people of Prefidut and some wonder workers as though pluck the fruits of paradise from nearby, which according to definite verses of the Quran is above the heavens, and they sometimes gaze on paradise from near at hand. This matter, which concerns infinite distance within infinite proximity, is not conformable with the understanding of the present age. Also, the unimportant situation of an unimportant person being the subject of discussion in the sublime assembly in the universal, vast land of the heavens is not conformable with the wisdom of the utterly wise administration of the universe. Nevertheless, these three matters are considered to be among the truths of Islam. The answer. Firstly, in the seven steps of the third is called the fifteenth word, the repulsion and ejection with stars of diabolical spies from the heavens, expressed by the verse, and we have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps, and we have made them missiles to drive away the evil ones, is proud so certainly with seven premises that it convinces to abrade materialist, silencing him and forcing him to accept it. Secondly, we shall allude to those three truths which are supposed to be far from the reason with a comparison that will bring them close to narrow minds. For example, if a state's army office is in the east of the country, its minister of justice in the west, its education minister in the north, its religious affairs departments in the south, and its civil service in the center, and each department and minister communicates and is connected with the others by means of radio, telephone, and telegraph in most regular and orderly fashion, the whole country will quite simply be its army office, the same as it is its minister of justice, and will be its learned establishments as it is its civil service. And for example, it sometimes happens that numerous countries and states whose capitals are different have sovereignty over a single country in different ways through colonies or concessions or trade. 
Although the country's subjects and nation are one, through its concessions, each state has connections with them. The affairs of those states, which are distant from one another, touch on each other, they come close to each other in all the houses of the country, and they share in each of its people. Its minor matters are seen in a minor sphere in its points of contact. For each minor matter is not taken from the universal sphere. But when those minor matters are discussed, they are mentioned as though they are taken from the universal sphere, since they are directly in accordance with the universal sphere's laws, they are given the form of a matter discussed in that sphere. Like these two comparisons, although the land of the heavens is extremely distant in respect of its center and capital, it has immaterial telephones reaching the hearts of men in the land of the earth. Furthermore, it does not only look to the corporeal world, but, in one respect, encompasses the manifest world, since it comprises the spirit world and world of the inner dimension of things. The sphere of influence of paradise too, which is from the world of eternity, an everlasting realm, stretches out and spreads in luminous fashion beneath the veil of the manifest, despite its infinite distance. Just as although, through the wisdom and power of the all-wise and glorious Maker, the centers of the senses in man's head are all different, each governs the body taking it under its disposal, so the universe, the Maker Anthropos, comprises thousands of worlds one within the other like concentric circles. Sometimes, the situations and events that occur in them are the object of attention in respect of their universality and particularity and insignificance and immensity, that is to say, those particulars are to be seen in particular, near places, while the universals and immense matters are seen in universal west stations. However, sometimes a minor, particular event occupies a vast world. In whichever corner of the world you listen, you will hear about it. And sometimes, some vast mobilization is not against the enemy's forces, but for a show of pomp and majesty. For example, the event of Muhammad upon the blessings and peace, and sacred occurrence of the Quran's revolution were the most important events in the land of the heavens and were brooded in every corner of it. Then, there were more falling stars, which was a dominical sign proclaiming the degree of splendor of the Quranic revolution and its glittering sovereignty, and the degree of its truthfulness, which could be penetrated by no doubt, and was expressed and illustrated by the sentries posted on the distant, towering bastions of the vast heavens raining down, missiles to drive off and repulse the devils. The Quran of Miraculous Exposition expounds and proclaims that cosmic proclamation and alludes to those heavenly signs. Yes, such a tremendous heavenly sign and the spying assassins who were being made to do battle with the angels although they could have been blown away at the puffing of an angel was surely to show the majesty of the Quranic revelation's sovereignty. Also, this splendid exposition of the Quran and West heavenly mobilization indicate that there was nowhere the jinns and devils could interfere on the long way from the heart of Muhammad, upon whom the blessings and peace, to the world of the heavens and the sublime throne, not that the jinns and as satans possess some power which draw the inhabitants of the heavens to fight them and defend against them. The Quranic revelation was a truth discussed by all the angels in the heavens, in order the Satans were compelled to rise to the heavens to draw close to it a little, but were not successful and were repulsed. This shows that the revelation that came to the heart of Muhammad, upon whom the blessings and peace, and Gabriel, who came to his presence, and the truths of the unseen which appeared to his gaze, were sound and straight and could be pierced by no doubts. The Quran of Miraculous Exposition tells this in miraculous fashion. As for paradise being seen from very close despite its great distance, and being part of the world of eternity, and sometimes fruits being plucked from it, 
This transient world and manifest realm is the veil to the world of the unseen, an everlasting realm as may be understood from the above two comparisons. Paradise may be seen everywhere by means of the mirror of the world of similitudes, despite the distance of its supreme center. So too, where there is belief at the degree of absolute certainty, paradise may have source of colonies and ministries in the transient world, if there is no mistake in the comparison, and by means of the telephone of the heart, may communicate with elevated spirits, and its gifts may come to them. As for a universal sphere being preoccupied with particular, personal matters, that is to say, a Satan's rising to the heavens, and Eve's dropping in order to bring reports of the unseen to serve sayers, and their bringing false, confused news, as is described in Quranic commentaries, it must be as follows. It is not a question of their going as far as the capital of the land of the heavens and gathering particular news, but of there being certain places resembling police art spots, if the metaphor is not mistaken, in the country of the heavens, which encompasses the atmosphere. In this day, have relations with the country of the earth. The Satan's eavesdrop on particular events in those particular places. The human heart, even, is one such place where the angel of inspiration and personal devil do battle. Also, however particular the truths of belief and the Quran and the events connected with Muhammad upon whom the blessings and peace, they are as though the greatest and most universal and important events and are published at the sublime throne and in the sphere of the heavens the most universal sphere, in, if the comparison is not mistaken, the newspapers of the appointed events of the universe. They are discussed on every corner, since, from the heart of Muhammad, upon whom the blessings and peace, to the sphere of the throne, there is no way the Satans can interfere, they do nothing apart from listening to the heavens. Thus, the verse proclaims and shows most eloquently, indeed, miraculously, how elevated and true are the Quranic revelation and prophethood of Muhammad upon whom the blessings and peace, and that it is in no way possible to oppose them or draw close to them with subterfuge or falsehood. Said Nursi